Okay, our next speaker is Tobias Zwick, who is the inventor of Street Complete, which even if you haven't used it yourself, you might have seen some screenshots in Matteo's earlier talk today. Um, and you've, other talks have already touched on the subject that Tobias is going to cover, um, meaning that, you know, um, sometimes it can make sense to in, to Make assumptions, make assumptions about default of something uh, without having to explicitly tag, like, you know, every single street in this city is actually asphalted, um, or in your case, talking about max speed. Welcome, Tobias. Thank you. Uh, so, I want to talk about max speed today. Uh, you will probably know it. Uh, maybe for router applications, this is maybe the next uh, important uh, tag after the road classifications because without max speed, you have to make big guesses how, how fast you can actually go on a, on a road, and it can vary a lot. So, uh, as a starting question, what do you think? Uh, what's the percentage of roads that have max speed tagged? And with roads, I mean proper roads, not uh, not uh, tracks or service roads or pedestrian roads, and so on. Zero? <laughs> Who thinks it's less than 50%? Okay, probably everyone. 25%? Uh, less than 25? If, okay, less than 10. I think you uh, have a quite good estimate, actually. It's 15%. So, um, well, for people who are interested in this data, like routing applications, uh, this means they have to fill up a hole of 85% of data with some more or less good estimates. And uh, so this is a problem for them. Um, but it's getting better, right? This is from Tag Info. Uh, the blue line is max speed. And there we have the number of uh, max speed uh, tags. And this is the year. So it's maybe it's just a matter of time. Maybe we, we are not there yet. And we just, it will solve uh, itself over time. Uh, maybe, or I'm not sure. Uh, I, it will, I mean, it's going up, right? So, so it's, it will solve. Uh, solves itself. Well, sadly, no. Uh, this is the percentage of, of uh, roads tagged with max speed, and it hasn't been really uh, going up in the last years uh, because, of course, over the over the time, new roads are added too. So the percentage um, stays the same, more or less. So this is nothing that will solve itself in the next few years, maybe, I don't know, maybe over a very much longer period. Um, so why is this the case? Why is there so little max speed tech, even though it's such an important piece of data? Well, first of all, adding roads is easier. You can uh, just add the roads from satellite imagery. You can trace them and even maybe do it semi-automatically with rapid. And you can do it from home. You don't need to be there. But usually you can't see the uh, speed limit signs from space. So either you have to actually be there or look at mapillary data, stuff like that. And this is always more work to do. So this would be, could be one reason. And the other one reason is that, well, the tagging schema a bit, because when there's a road and you don't see any sign, so what do you tag? you need to maybe know the legislation in whatever country you're mapping in. Maybe this seems trivial, like, okay, I'm in the city, it will be 50 kilometers per hour, right? But in Poland, it's 60, right? I know it used to be 60, now it's 50. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good anecdote. Uh, so, but uh, maybe I'll leave that out. Um, 
uh, in Russia it's 60, I think. So, uh, but but outside of the city it gets more complicated. You really need to, need to know uh, how uh, how it is tech to actually put a max speed there. So people who are not sure will then rather not put anything. So not to put any uh, wrong data in. Um, So, but let's say you know, let's say you have been to France uh, on vacation many times, you're on some rural street and you know, okay, I've been here, it's, it's 90 kilometers per hour, no problem. And then the problem is solved. So just one hack and uh, we can move on. Well, uh, turns out uh, it changed in 2018. Um, and this was an actual problem and it, because, because and places where just this was tagged, um, people didn't know was this tagged because uh, there was a sign, or was this tagged because people assumed that this is the default, and so we can just put this tag and be done with it. Um, so, um, and this is not something that happens very rarely, as, as we see in Poland, a change from this we had uh, 60 in the night um, to just 50 everywhere. And just, uh, I think, end of 2021 or beginning this year in Colombia, all the default speed limits also changed, uh, both in, uh, in the city and outside of the city. So this is why we have this tag. Um, it says like, where does this max speed value above come from? It comes from, well, it comes from that it's implicitly uh, a rural road. Um, or if, if there's actually a sign, you can have as a value sign. And so, but why this peculiar value? Why not just implicit or default? Because the idea behind this tag is that you can have maybe somewhere in the wiki or something a table where you can just map one to one this. Um, this key, for example, FR rural or DE uh, uh, urban or something to a proper speed and data consumers can just look, the t look, at, look at the table or use the table to arrive at a proper speed. And actually, if that works really well and uh, the, the table is well, uh, well managed and people update this table, um, then one could even say, uh, then I could leave out the, the 80 of max speed because uh, it's so easy to get it from this uh, value and whenever it changes in the legislation, I don't even need to do some kind of mass edit on the OpenStreetMap data to, uh, fill, uh, to, to, to correct this data. So um, then came the British and they said, well, uh, what is this? This is kind of a misuse of the source tag. The source tag is for something like Bing, survey, mapillary, Stuff like that. So we can't have this structured value in, in the source tag. So we'll use max speed type uh, instead. It, with the same structured value, of our, uh, rural and so on, depending on the country. Um, and then came other people and said, well, it's basically maybe something like a max speed zone. You know, you have these slow zones, the 30 zone and so on. So we can put this into this tag, even also with the same value. And then other people came along and said, well, but these kind of road types or traffic zones, they also have some other um, implications. For example, on certain roads, you may then not park or you may not overtake. So it is not limited to a max speed. We should call it like this. And then Russians and Romanians came and said, if we, if we don't even, uh, if, if, if this is kind of superfluous, we can just put this structured value into the max speed tag itself. So don't do this outside of Russia or Romania, because otherwise you will be hit with a plank, I think. Um, but nevertheless, this is like common practice in these two countries. So it's a bit of a mess. Um, welcome to OpenStreetMap. But, uh, Data consumers just have to, the idea is the same. The data consumers just have to look at any of these tags or all of these tags and, and have a look at the structured value behind. And then the idea is that there's this 
a one-to-one -one mapping to a proper uh, speed limit. Problem solved, right? Or not? Because, well, it doesn't really work, sadly. Uh, first of all, from the matters point of view, it's not e really easier now to, to um, properly denote that a road uh, has no speed limit. Because now they not only have to know the exact speed limit that they put in the max speed tag, maybe if, if they want to, but also they need to know the road category. It's not only urban and rural. There can be many different um, uh, road categories. I will come to that in a moment. So they have to tag two tags now. It's more difficult. And these road categories, of, of course, need to be defined somewhere in the wiki, documented, that they, are, that they can actually be used. Because not, people should not be um, expected to just come up with, with some, some, road, some road type they um, come up in. And the problem is, there is no table or something in the wiki that has this one-to-one -one mapping. There are some like beginnings of that with a handful of countries in them, but it's they are not complete. So, but well, at least these uh, two points they can be solved by someone who will just just will, will just create this table, do the research, and this is what I did, and um, this wiki page is the result of that. Let's have a look. So, and this is, this is meant for data consumers, not not for mappers, um, because mappers shouldn't really. Uh, and I mean, I will just show you the table, and you can later maybe read through the whole page because it's really really long. <laughs> you will see here on the left side this the country, and then you have the road type, urban rural, but other things too, and then this is the max speed. And maybe like conditional max speed, like here it's 120 for rural dual carriageways with two or more lanes in each direction uh, and motorways, uh, 120 kilometers per hour and 90 for uh, heavy cars. So I want to show you from the example right now. It's a nightmare for. <laughs> Let's <laughs> start at the beginning. So we have urban, that's fine. We have rural, 80. But we have also two different road categories here. Uh, motorway, OK. Rural road with two or more lanes in each direction. And rural dual carriageway. Now, to see if this idea I talked of, this one-to-one -one mapping, urban. I just need to go to the button. Um, if this mapping works, we can have a look at um, source max speed or any of the other, but this source max speed of the bunch is the most used one. Um, filter by value. We have the one to one mapping here. We have zone 30, we have urban, we have rural, motorway, living streets. But the other two categories I mentioned, the rural dual carriageway and the rural road with two or more lanes, this is missing. So we don't have a one-to-one -one mapping, which means this data we have in the source max speed, et cetera, tag is not, not useless, but we cannot directly use it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is a problem because then this is not a solution. Uh, but this is enough of bad news. The good news is this is the solution. I, I did this research and it was, by the way, enormous effort. I think I read through over 250 different traffic legislations. And they are all given uh, in the references. And they show you. <laughs> uh, yeah, here begin the references. Uh, so. <laughs> Okay, that's it. <laughs> um, so, I was paid for that actually. I didn't come to that. Um, um, 
So let's like get back to the problem. So the, the um, solution is here because we have all the row types. The only link that is missing is that we translate these things to tags in OSM. For example, rural dual carriage way, we have tags for that. It's one way equals yes or minus one. That, then there, there's a, well, most one ways will be dual carriage ways, but there's also another tag called dual underscore carriage way. So we can say, okay, it's a dual carriage way if it's a one way and dual carriage way is not no, for example. Or here with two or more lines in each direction, simple, simple. We just use lane stacks. So we can use source max speed, uh, FR rural plus lanes equals four or more. And we have this mapping. So in this huge wiki page, there's a table that There's another table that does exactly this mapping. For example, some country, I don't know, I don't remember now which one, has a speed limit set, default speed limit set for roads that have a number in their, in their reference number. So we can just look, okay, does this have a number, this road? And uh, has at least two lanes because that's how it's defined in legislation. Then we know it's of that category, and then we can get to the max speed. So, have a look at the site, and if you find anything wrong, please correct it. But always give the source to the actual legislation because only this way you can um, keep this page 100% correct. If we, if you can always verify it. Um, the mouse is really. So let's get back to yeah, so, so the findings. I already mentioned it. Source max speed is kind of, yeah, well, it's not useless, but it's only good to see if, if a max speed that has been tagged is signed, because that's also a value that can be used, or if it's urban or rural, but only because there's no other tag. We, there's no tag something like rural equals yes or something. But at least we can use this tag to see if something is urban or rural. And this is very important because most countries will distinguish between urban roads and rural roads. But of course, the problem is this tag with, for example, source max speed urban is only set if there's no explicit uh, speed limit. If there's an explicit speed limit, it will be source max speed signed. So we don't have the information whether a road is um, urban or rural if there's an explicit speed limit sign because these two data are kind of meshed together in this pack. So it's not ideal, but it will help us uh, get the right um, road type. And maybe you saw it already uh, while scrolling through the table. Legislations in different countries are very different. So the road types that are defined in the different uh, legislations um, can be defined from physical features like how many lanes it has, if it is a dual carriage way, um, or from some government designation or something like that. For example, several US states say if it's a Nebraska state route, then it's uh, this um, speed limit, etc. cetera. Um, so we can look at the reference number or something else if it's part of a route relation. Um, or, or even it matches with the classification in OpenStreetMap. For example, the best example is motorway. Usually motorways uh, always uh, turn up in the legislation somewhere, like the speed limit on motorways is better, or motor roads, etc. Okay, so now this is interesting. You can get out your smartphone and get this QR code, then you uh, land on this page here. And this is a demo I um, created because I also created a a uh, library and an application to uh, pass the data on this wiki page. And you can type in in which country you are and what tags are on the road, and it will output um, it will output the, the missing max speed tags, including uh, the max speeds for other vehicle types, not only the normal max speed, but also for you have seen it maybe in the table for motorhomes, for trucks, for buses, etc. And this is this is usually never tagged. 
So this is uh, in uh, that alone is already um, nice information. Um, I think maybe it's not big enough. Yeah, uh, I think this is. So I will again show you graph. So there's a, always a fallback. If, if nothing is found, it will fall back to other roads, which is usually the rural, the normal rural road. In this case, 80. But 60 if you have a trailer and you weigh uh, more than, no, uh, the max weight rating is more than 12 tons. Or if it's, if you are a semi tractor truck. Or if you have dangerous goods and also weigh more than 12 tons. Um, so if I type in here, so. Say, ah, okay, so you're on a rural road. But the tax are uh, other things. So. And then let's say yeah, two lanes, nothing changes, three lanes, no, four lanes. Ah, this road type. So now you can go 90 kilometers per hour and more routes for other vehicle types. This is the conditional syntax, really hard, but this is what data consumers need to pass anyway if they want to understand so this tag, <laughs> this tagging. Uh, and what was the other one? Dual carriageway. Um, let's just say it's a one way. And there we have it. We can go 110 now. Uh, I prepared some other examples. You can just click on them if you have the page open. For example, in, in Czechia, urban motorways have a different speed limit than rural motorways. So this is 80, but you still may, you must go uh, faster than 65. Or, um, I mentioned this also early, earlier, in different countries, the different OpenStreetMap communities um, came up with different tagging schemes to de um, designate the different government designated roles. So for example, the Philippine community has uh, used De designation, a bearing guy road is something like a two market road, so something like a minor track road, maybe the dirt track. So they use this tag to say that this uh, that is, is actually a barangay road, and the barangay road is a um, road that is mentioned in the legislation. Um, this the library I wrote, and of course then also this demo. Uh, can also do a reverse search. So, for example, if you want to, you have a certain speed limit tagged already, um, it will do the reverse search. So, it will search for the road that has the max speed of 70, which would be in this case the national secondary road. You can try it out with, with Germany, France, and so on. And finally, um, or unpaved roads, finally, I will go back to France, maybe, or Italy, whatever. And there's also fuzzy matching. It's also defined in the table what uh, fuzzy matching is. For example, if, uh, if it's a list, then the chances are very high that it's urban, because usually rural roads are not, um, um, are not lit. So here it says it's a fuzzy match with the road type urban. Or if, if the same works with sidewalk equals no, because usually country roads don't have sidewalks. But this is just the fuzzy mapping, so the question is if, if router applications really want to trust this value. But if it's an exact match, then uh, there's a lot of reason to trust this value. Um, and that's it. I'm done. I could, I don't know, I don't know how, oh, I'm over time. <laughs> So I have nothing more to show, only answer questions.
Thank you, Tobias. I have two questions in the uh, for, from the online audience. Uh, the first is about: <clears throat> Have you had any corporate interest in uh, in in doing what you did here, or in uh, working with speed limits? Um, because the EU has some uh, leg legislation that requires cars at some point to automatically uh, determine speed limits. So there is lots of corporate interest in that. Um, so is is that something that where you have seen uh, have have you seen any corporate interest interest in that kind no. of? No, I, I was in contact with the different router, um, um, the development teams of the different router applications a bit, and uh, like Grasshopper and and uh, Valhalla, and said, hey, look at this project. Do you have any comments? Do you have feedback? But otherwise. Uh, Okay, thanks. Uh, another question is, um, how do you deal with governments making exceptions to the rules? Apparently, there are some carriageways in Ireland that have 120 limit instead of what would be the default. But I mean, yeah, that would yeah, just... Yeah, but, but there will be a sign, right? You would just say... I, 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 the, the questioner didn't say if, if there would be a sign, but I guess there might the, okay, there would so, be. Okay, so just to be clear, this is only for... Uh, getting the implicit speed limit. So if there, in case there's no sign, if there's sign, of course, it means that this speed limit is valid. Uh, any more questions from this audience? Uh, yeah, can you put again the the tool? I just found for for Spain. Uh, so last year the legislation uh, updated, and now urban roads have these two types of max speed. Uh, depending on the number of lanes, so that is that is correct. But uh, can you put on the input uh, highway residential? Oh, you're missing the Y. Yeah, and then yeah, without lanes, okay. But then put lanes two, and it's still thirty. If you put lanes four, it's fifty. But if you put lanes three, it doesn't match anything. Lane three, so one lane, one one in one direction, two in the other. Yeah. So if it's one per direction, it should be thirty. If it's more, it should be fifty. So I guess three should be one in one direction, two in other. So maybe fifty. But I have to double check the legislation. But it's not matching anything. So maybe it's a case to. You mean if there's one lane in one direction, yeah. that would be the speed limit for the two lane road, and for the other direction, it would be the speed I, limit for the. I would four say. I would say that in this case, it would be two lanes in one direction, one in the other, so it would be 50, but your tool is not matching anything. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Let's, let's have a talk. Let's, yeah. <laughs> Basically, this, this is based on the data in the wiki table. You can just look up the data on the wiki table and see if it's correct and maybe correct it. There should also be references to the actual legislation text. So anyone can just fix it on the wiki, right? Well, uh, as I said, um, please, uh, whenever you make a change, always uh, put the reference to the actual legislation text. So More questions? it's verifiable. More questions here? Have you looked at using um, built up area polygons to automatically detect what is urban and what is rural? The what? Have you looked at using um, basically built up area polygons? So, you know, um, shapes of urban areas so that you can work out whether a road is. Well, that urban would or be rural. up to the data consumers. That would be up to um, Graphhopper, et cetera. Um, and it also doesn't work out, actually, because maybe, you know, in the U US, uh, some. Uh, cities, they look like checkerboards. If you look at the um, administrative boundaries, there will be some city, and then in the middle of the city, some squares that are not the city anymore. Uh, yeah, I, I was using I was, admin boundaries is really not a good way to. So I was thinking more um, land cover and land use than admin boundaries. I mean, right. I, I say that because I use it for cycle travel because um, I find that some of the routing judgments I want to make are different in cities than uh, rural areas, uh, and I have a very imperfect set of uh, built-up area polygons. So in Europe, they come from Corinne. Um, in the states, uh, there is a data set for that, and yeah, it. It's really, really imperfect, but it does get you another step along the way to working right. out if 
the tag isn't there in the first place. So as, as the max speed data itself, the source max speed equals urban or rural data is also, uh, the coverage is also really bad. So data consumers such as yourself um, and other router applications, they need something to fill this hole. And I know from the Valhalla team and from Graphhopper team that they, um, they look at the density of roads. And then depending on the density of roads, they say, okay, if there are so many roads, then it must be urban. It's a fuzzy match, but um, it's maybe good enough to have some estimation. Okay, thanks. So, room for one last question, if there is any. No, then thank you again, Tobias, for your talk.